So when you're completing the square and you have a problem that looks like this, we have an issue that we need to address first, and that issue is going to be this four. Whenever we're applying completing the square, we can only apply it when our coefficient of our x squared is going to equal to one. So we need to get rid of that four. Now there's two different ways we can get rid of the four. We could do factoring or we could do dividing. And in this video, that's exactly what I wanna do. I wanna show you the factoring approach as well as the dividing approach. And you can make the determination on which approach that you like better for getting rid of your coefficient when you need to go ahead and complete the square. Now, from a teacher's perspective, either one is going to work. Some students just are better at with factoring. Some students are going to be better with dividing, but they all kind of have their benefits and their issues that come up. I will say though, from a teaching's perspective, I like to teach factoring when we're using completing the square to identify the vertex. And I like to apply the dividing approach when we're trying to solve the quadratic equation using completing the square. This doesn't necessarily mean that you need to follow this exact same advice. I'll work through them for a vertex problem as well as a solving problem, and you can do it either way, whatever works for you. So let's go and take a look at the factoring approach first. Okay. So for the factoring approach, what we are basically going to do is we're going to factor out the four. The problem with this is I cannot factor out a four out of a four, eight, and a three, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do grouping. By putting some parentheses here, I'm not changing the value of this expression at all, right? I'm just grouping four x squared plus eight x, okay? So now though, I can factor out the four. Okay. Now, a lot of students come in to ask the question, well, why don't you factor out the x, right? Because a lot of times when we're factoring, we factor out the greatest common factor. And again, the idea, the purpose behind this is we're not trying to factor out the GCF. We're just trying to factor out the four. And we could factor out of the three, so we only factor it, grouped it out of the first two terms. Now, the whole idea of completing the square is creating a perfect square trinomial. And so what we need to be able to do is we need, need to be able to identify the value C that creates that perfect square trinomial. So how do we identify this value C that creates the perfect trinomial? Well, thankfully, there's a little formula that we can follow. C is equal to B divided by 2 quantity squared. So in this example, I have my b, which is going to be the coefficient of my linear term inside of this already factored out, and I already made the mistake again. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're factoring out the four, factor out the four from here as well as from here. Be careful, Miss McLogan. Thank you if you already caught that and wrote a comment down below. Some of you guys are very, very quick with that. So yeah, it's gonna be the coefficient of my linear term after you factored out the four, right? You gotta factor out that four. So C, in this case, is going to be a two divided by two quantity squared. Well, two divided by two is one. One squared is equal to a one. That is going to be my value B, C that I'm going to include here. But there's also something that's very important. And this is where a lot of mistakes come into. And especially I'll make mistakes on this because I'll explain something at one point and then I'll forget to go back. And that's almost where you can kind of see where I did because I added the C here. But it's really important when you add a C, you just can't randomly add a C to an equation because now the equation is off balance. So if I'm adding a C inside of this parentheses to create this perfect square trinomial, I also have to make sure I subtract a C. Now, to further complicate things on this process, you need to also recognize I'm not really adding a C. I'm adding a C that via distributive property is being multiplied by four. So when I subtract this C, I also need to multiply it by four. All right, so now we have our one, so I'm gonna replace my C's with ones. Okay. Now the next thing about completing the square is once you find your value C, you add it into, we know that this is a perfect square trinomial. We know that this can be factored down into a binomial squared. A binomial squared basically means a binomial multiplied by itself. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for the exact same number multiplied by itself that's gonna give me one and then add to give me two. Hopefully you recognize that's going to be an X plus one. Okay, and then you can see here negative four times one is a negative four, negative three minus four is a negative seven. So if we were identifying the vertex in this case, we could say that it's a negative one going to be a negative seven. I like that because it keeps everything on the right hand side, even though sometimes we can be a little bit confusing with this multiplying by the four on both sides. But once you get practice with it and you're just diligent with your work, it's not too bad. All right, so now let's go and look at the dividing approach on this case. So when we're looking at the dividing approach, you could still do it with y's and 
and find the vertex, you just need to multiply everything back over at the end. But the reason why I like doing it with solving is because when we're looking for the dividing approach, I'm gonna replace the y with a zero because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the solutions when x is going to equal to zero. All right, so, and now with dividing, it kind of comes in the same thing. What we want to do is we got to get rid of this four, but I don't really want to divide everything by a four, at least just yet. What I simply want to do is get this three over to the other side. Now, you can see my first two terms, they are divisible by four, so I'm going to divide by a four on both sides. All right, now what I have done, I have now isolated, gotten rid of that four, so now I can complete the square here. Again, going through the same thing. We need to find the value C that is going to create this perfect square trinomial. And we can see, now in this case, I do it a little bit differently though. Rather than adding and subtracting on the same side because I wanted to keep everything on the right-hand side, in this case, I actually wanna get everything over to the left-hand side. So what I'm gonna do in this case, the way that I'm gonna write it, I want to add a C on both sides. So you can see C plus there. So it's a positive C and that's a positive 34. So again, remember whatever you do on one side, you have to do it on the other. Or whatever you do on one side, as long as you do it on that side, you have to subtract it on that side, okay? So we know the value is going to be one, so I'm simply just going to write that in there. So we have a one plus a three fourths is equal to a x squared plus two x plus one, right? Remember our value C is one. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, one is the same thing as four over four, right? So therefore we could rewrite this as a four over four. So therefore that's going to be a seven fourths. And then over here, we can rewrite this as a X plus one quantity squared, which is exactly what we did over here. Now to simply solve this, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Where's my orange? There's my orange. And then I am now going to have a X is equal to a plus or minus, and you can see here, I cannot take the square root of seven, 2.645713, but I can take the square root of four. So that's going to be a square root of seven over two. And then, sorry, that's an X plus one, right? So now my last step, I just need to subtract a one to both sides. So my final answer, uh, right in this, is X is gonna equal a negative one, right? You subtract the one to both sides, plus or minus a square root of seven over two. Now. I just want you to see guys, what if we did all, what if we did this approach and then replace the Y with zero? We added a seven, divide by four, and then we'd get the exact same thing over here, right? You add the seven over, and then you divide by four and you get this exact same equation. So you can see using that approach would be the same thing as using it for on this approach. It really just depends on what works. And I think dividing works really nice when you have it equal to zero. And the factoring approach really works nice when you just have to keep everything over to the same side. So hopefully this video was helpful for you.